Sure, I've never hit that chord in my life. Ladies and gentlemen, Michael Palmisano here, and uh, as you can see behind me, we have rock climbing walls that are supposed to be going up in the drywall for Christmas. Yes, that's right. Rock climbing walls my wife wants me to install in the drywall in our finished basement inside for Christmas. This comes after yesterday, where I got a cord of wood delivered, which, by the way, it's incredibly difficult to find, not just Christmas trees right now, but cords of seasoned hardwood, not green stuff, delivered to your house. It is very difficult, and of course, it took me a week, and what happens the day it gets delivered? Snowstorm. So, moved probably a couple thousand pounds worth of wood yesterday, and now I have to install a rock climbing wall inside in the drywall in my finished basement. But I get an email from Daniel Knight. He says, Michael, just found your YouTube channel, digging your videos. Definitely going to check out the courses the way you like down, break down the videos. Goes on to say he's a huge Dead fan, loves the Cornell stuff. He's ready for the do. I know we're all ready for the do. He goes, if you haven't heard of Krang Bin, you might want to dive into them as they're phenomenal and Mark is a very dynamic player. Um, and he shares a link with me and wants me to do a song August 12th. Um, there have been a thousand requests for Krangbin. Easy. Uh, we've listened to a bunch of pieces of tracks on the Tuesday Night Lives. Uh, dozens of requests for Krangbin on the website. I mean, literally probably a thousand on YouTube. Uh, they're everywhere. So I figured, you know what? It's time to do a proper video. Now, in all, in all full transparency, some of the tunes that I've heard little snippets of, I've digged, and some haven't done anything for me because it's that spacey, drenched in reverb, ambient thing, and that style music I don't normally listen to. But I do dig like just bass and drums locked in. And so from what I've heard, that's, you know, kind of what this is all about. Um, but from a guitar playing standpoint, like the super reverb, all the crazy stuff, that's just something I've never really gotten into. But here we go. This is Krangbin. Let's go down. 745 all day. Hold on. Full screen. Love timestamps. Love timestamps. Here we go. Guys, I just... <laughs> I'm editing the video and I realized that I actually hit the link for August 10, not August 12, in the YouTube timestamp. Uh, of course, they have different songs <laughs> two days apart in August. Uh, so please forgive me. I'm not going to redo because, as you guys know, uh, then it wouldn't be genuine. So I'm inserting this little edit so you know that uh, I realized I... Um, Kind of screwed the pooch on this one. Anyhow, hope you enjoy. Cheers. <laughs>
I t again, like I mentioned before him, I really dig just the bass and drums. Just like whenever I get together with a new band and I happen to be playing drums, and I'm not like a good drummer or anything, but I, I do love to play drums. Um, I always just try to sink in with the bass player, just doing just the hi-hat kick and just the clicks, just the rim shots, right? And so like I totally dig the reggae-ish vibe, even though it's not a one drop, um, just that's happening between the bass and drums. So what is happening? Uh, again, if you're new to this channel, we do broad strokes. Uh, essentially, this is a one to a five in B minor. So you got B minor. You also got B minor and F sharp minor. And what the bass is doing is pedaling around this one flat three to four kind of groove. Right? It's all that root, flat three, four, and then you can push through the five to get to the next one, but it's really about kind of sussing out, sus meaning suspending the third, the minor third, right? So B, D, E. And over here you have B, A, uh, sorry, F sharp, A, and B. So again, one flat three four, one flat three four. And now the guitar player is going back and forth between doing like some ambient kind of chord structures and little melody lines, but it's so drenched in reverb that it's more about the texture than it is like an earworm that's hooking you in. So far, let's see where it goes. That's good though. run though. Now that's cool right there. So you'd think you're going, you'd think you'd be hammering that, that B major, sorry, that B minor, right? Root, flat three. But he's hitting that C sharp in here. So what that is, is that's the fifth of the F sharp you're playing over. And what this really does is illustrate once and for all that we are actually in B minor Aeolian, right? This note, gives away that D major is really our tonic. So D is one, uh, B minor is six. So that's relative, major, and minor. Because if you just look at your B minor and F sharp, it's unclear you know, what key you're in with just those two chords. If you had two minor chords back to back, like F sharp and E, Right? You would know that's a three and that's a two. Right? And then D would be one, which is what I'm assuming this is. But if we if we had B and we had F sharp, but then we also had say a C sharp minor, then we're like, oh, well this is a this is a different story. Then we you know we're clearly an A here. So that's cool. That really led the ear in. That You have, you have that ba -na 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 -na. call it a chorus, call it a bridge, whatever it is, you're going to your relative major. Again, classic songwriting uh, technique here. You're in your relative minor, and then you go to your relative major. So it goes right to D. So one, 
I'm gonna speak in terms of D now. One, five, two, one, right? Five, over to the left. So you got D, A, E minor, D, A. And then it goes to your actual five, so your five of B, your F sharp, which pulls back to your tonic center of B minor. So you're just you're just playing a standard uh, you're playing a standard relative minor to a relative major. This is completely diatonic, and it's just groove. It's groove and texture. It's just groove and texture and just the way they kind of dance and the vibe and like the screens behind them that's like the whole thing that was a slick little thing I love that when again you're thinking you're gonna stick to B minor right and play that D and B that root and minor third but he really seems to have a commitment to playing that nine there, right? That C sharp. Really gives it that cleaner flair, really establishes that, you know, there's more going on here than just. Oh, sorry. Yeah, you know, it's just it's just a little more interesting. Whenever you accentuate that nine in minor progressions, it just brightens it up. And I love the little little trills he's doing. That ring. And and the and and all those all those upstrokes, right? Right? Again, it's it's like it's like I don't know. Do you call it like lo-fi reggae sort of? I don't know. Um, but definitely just the way that he's doing that it's a it's a reggae vibe. It's certainly a reggae style bass line, but it's not a one drop, right? It's not that right? Um, it's cool. Yeah, that 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 He's got some cool stuff happening in here. He, you know, he's also really showcasing that A a lot. Even in the rhythm parts where he's going down here to this little piece of, it's just A and E, like from B. And all these little things in here, you know, that landing on A, choosing that C sharp a lot, which is the third of A, he's, and, and even going to that relative major and minor part, where it really, even though D is one, the way he plays it is like A is one. He kind of wants to resolve to A. Yeah, I don't know, I didn't pull out again. Um, it's, it's cool. Vibrato, ba doo doo. See, that's what I mean. Like right there, he's, he's thinking A all day. Check this. Check this. Right. Wait for it. Uh, sorry. Then 
this. That, little, that is an A major triad he just went across. It's very, very cool. It's 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 got a modal vibe to it. Cause like again, you're playing over B minor and F sharp minor. Now F sharp minor. If you look at the top piece of it, you lift up your pinky here in pattern two. What this is, F sharp minor seven. F sharp minor seven is, in fact, A major. A major triad over F sharp. So I go all over about this stuff in my courses, but you can focus on just the top major triad, the A major, over this F sharp, and it gives it that seventhness. It gives it that modal kind of thing. And you see him do it here in a linear line. So again, they're. But when you get to that F sharp, you know. Right? It really just, it, it brings it out of the, oh, I'm only an F sharp neighborhood. You know, that's, that's really the thing about modal or just extended playing, and I'm using those terms very lightly, that screws people up is because you, your ear always gets caught to uh, the bass, you know, that tonic center. But you can choose to play the upper triad. You can choose to accentuate and sell the other parts of the harmony. And it's usually connected to another triad, like another piece which you can anchor onto. And you can clearly see him doing this here. So again, it's 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 in B minor, right? It's all diatonic, but and it goes to your relative major there in the in the bridge or chorus, whatever you call that, but it's the commitment to A that is really shining through. And that's what gives it that floaty, floaty vibe. You know, that, you know, with all the reverb and the saturation matched with, you know, the reggae bass and like the straight four on the floor, but like, you know, with the click drums, that really, it gives it that ethereal, floaty, just, you know, that's the sound. And that's it, just one more time. I know I'm driving this home, but just that that's the key takeaway here. See that everywhere, everywhere. He's aing everywhere. Right, right there. That is a piece of A, a major, the C sharp and E. That's A. He's Aing, he's Aing everywhere, while she's locking down the B minor and F sharp minor. That's that's the trick. That's the trick. And again, where do we go when we come out of here? Now, this is, I guess, what we'd call truly the bridge. Now we're going to not the relative major, so not D. Where are we going to? A, right? A. So we're really selling that that A mixo-ish vibe. This goes to A. Yeah, let me make sure I got it right before I start talking again. And there you have it. This again, you guys know I preach this all the time. When you when you hear something and you're like, "Man, what is that? That's cool." Drop drop it. Drop everything. Figure out what it is so you have it forever. Again, the bridge goes to A. E minor. F sharp minor. 
then to D. And right there, you hear it. I'm gonna play it again. You go back, you hear it. And you're like, okay, that's that's the tonic. But that's not what we're selling. We're not that's not what we're selling. We're selling that we're selling, you know, B Aeolian versus A Mixolydian over F sharp. <laughs> that's that's the brush we're painting with. But every now and again you get that D. And you can look, you can see he's he's doing it right now. He's playing a little piece of that D. And it just for a moment, it brightens up and your ear hears it and you're like, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I I thought I thought I knew what was happening. Listen for it. Listen for it. Hear what I'm saying? Let me point something out here to you. So those of you that have gigged a lot, you know what I'm about to say. When she comes out of the break, she's dancing with it. The drums cuts out, he's letting it shimmer, right? And she's got the groove. In an instant, she loses it. Stops dancing and loses the groove. Watch for it. I love watching people's internal subdivisions. That's why I always pick up on this stuff. Because when you watch people move, you see how they're actually feeling it inside, right? And if you're the drummer and the other guitar player, that's what you're watching to see when someone's coming in. You're not listening as much as you're watching them, right? Because the body is going to tell you when they're going to come in. Now watch this. She stops moving, and then a minute later, she misses this little beat. A second later, what? See? Dead giveaway. And now what, now, what, now what happens when you're in this scenario? Because this happens all the time if you gig a lot. Usually, usually, you give a little, give a little bat of the head and, you know, you leave a little space for the drummer to come in with the, the heartbeat. The snare. Yeah, see, especially in a band like this where the guitar player is doing ambient, not pushing rhythm across the room sounds, right? It's really all on the drummer. And you see, and he comes back in, watch his little head bob. He's like, I got you. I got you. I got you. No one's going to notice. I got you. I, I, I live for this stuff. She knows it. every four times or so. So you feel like you're getting towards the end of the song. You see her looking around.
bass line in unison. Yep, let them know. And then you shimmer away. Yeah, so that's that's it. You know, that's my key takeaway. Um, it is for for uh, on the rhythm side, um, it is that reggae-ish groove uh, with kind of like a lo-fi. Um, you know, drummer never leaves the three-piece with the click, um, but the drummer is so deep in the pocket, it's just absurd. It's perfect, right? Um, harmony wise, you know, it is in the key of B minor, which it's natural, it's relative major is, uh, D major. Um, and it goes from, it's one to a five. So B minor to F sharp minor, but the, the emphasis, uh, on the upper harmony is the A major triad. Uh, most of the sounds that you're hearing the spaciness you're getting is by accentuating the A, the A triad over that F sharp. So you're making the sound of that A minor seven. You're just doing it by focusing on the A. And he's doing that in the rhythm parts. He's doing it in the melody parts. Um, and that sound combined with, you know, the swimming and drenched in verb and delay and, and, and everything else that's on it creates that super ambient, just, shimmering in the in the stratosphere sound and then of course when it goes to the chorus and the bridge if you can call them that it does play off that relative major um, but again it still even though it never leaves key it still plays hard to the a really hard to the a and every now and again it gives you the d right and the d is the tonic center overall and when you hear it, you're like, whoa, wait a minute. Your ear's like, whoa, whoa, I, I thought I knew where one was. I, th I thought we were in a minor thing. And then you hear it and you're like, well, that must be off. But that's actually the true harmonic center. So it, in, for all intensive purposes, you know, it's in B minor, but the flavor is F sharp minor because, uh, F sharp minor seven, because you're accentuating that A in it. I don't really know what else to say. These are the these are the fun things you can do if you understand uh, how triads work in, in seventh chords, uh, how modes work, and it's really not that complicated. It's all diatonic. And look, there they are. I guess it's time to go. Anyway, if you'd love to learn more about that, I have a link to all my courses uh, over at GuitarGate on my website. I go all through this step by step, slow, not not rushed like this, like a reaction video. And of course, it supports this channel and everything free on YouTube. And I'd love to be your online teacher. And again, thanks for liking, subscribing, uh, dropping links in the comments, and I'll see you guys real soon. Cheers.